Hello and welcome and thank you for joining us on Business Incorporated. I'm Chimeze Obi Iwago. On the show today, Nigeria calls for appropriate debt solution for middle-income countries. And Ethiopian airlines will turn to state if crisis lasts until July. And Kenya plans to ban direct T sales as probe finds this function. Teeing off now with the intraday numbers here in Africa markets in the largest economies wearing the green. The JSC index in South Africa was almost 3% up, while the NSC index was up 1.26%. The market in Egypt is closed, but was down 1.81% on Thursday. Kenya was down 0.44% on Thursday. And markets in the Middle East are closed on Friday. However, on Thursday, being the last trading day for the week, most of them fell on fears that the world is in its worst recession since the 1930s, while reports of persistent crude oil oversupply and collapsing demand added to the worries. Saudi Arabia's benchmark index declined 2.67%, with oil giant Saudi Aramco shedding 1.3%. Qatar's index fell 3.11%, with most stocks trading lower. In Dubai, the main index lost 1.96%. The Abu Dhabi index was also down 3.83%. First Abu Dhabi Bank lost 2.2%. And telecoms firm Etisalat retreated 1.3%. And in Europe, stocks traded sharply higher on Friday morning after a report that a drug developed by Gilead, Gilead Sciences was showing effectiveness in treating the coronavirus. Well, these and more are what um, Conrad will be talking to us about. Hello, Conrad. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Chimmy. It's great to be back talking to you in Lagos. And nice to have you back. Well, 22 million Americans have lost their jobs in only four weeks. China today reported a shrinking economy for the first time in decades. But stock markets in Europe are up. What's up there? You know, Jimmy, uh, despite all the doom and gloom and despite, of course, the valid concerns about the impact of the coronavirus, uh, there's also a little glimpse of hope. The doom and gloom, of course, increases the pressure on governments to allow businesses to return more quickly. Donald Trump, the U.S. president, is one of those prominent politicians trying to get the economy in the United States going again. But also here in Germany, there's optimistic policymakers. Our uh, health minister sounds much more optimistic than he sounded uh, during the last few days and weeks. Today, he said the coronavirus outbreak is controllable here in Germany as of today. Of course, this is the health minister speaking. Of course, he is uh, talking about uh, the patient numbers, about uh, the uh, numbers of new infections. But you can translate this to the economy, at least if you are a hopeful uh, person or an investor on the markets. Next Monday, a few businesses here in Germany will be allowed to open again. Car dealerships, for example. The car makers who have seen such dismal slumps of car sales, they of course are hoping for a lot of new customers returning during the next few weeks, during the month of May. This is behind the hope that has been fueling demand on the stock market here in Frankfurt today. The DAX up 3.6% compared to yesterday. On the week, the gain is a little bit smaller, but still 1.5%. And there's hope that a medication against COVID-19 can be found soon. Shares in the pharmaceutical company Gilead have skyrocketed because of this. Tell us more. Yes, the shares here in European trading and Frankfurt trading, Gilead's shares are up 13%. The tests of this medication started already in March, very early in the corona crisis. Uh, Gilead took a medication called Remdesivir. It is a medication normally used against HIV, against Ebola, against the Marburg disease, against MERS and SARS. And I know that you, Chimi, have, of course, in Nigeria, heard about some of those diseases. They are all induced by viruses. Just like COVID-19, the disease that people get from the coronavirus, and the tests that uh, Gilead started in March are reported to be very encouraging. 
We are talking rumors here. Of course, Gilead itself, the company, is very silent about this. These are tests ongoing, but the rumors are enough for the markets to become hopeful and enough for those investors to start betting on the shares of Gilead Sciences. What does all of these uh, mean for prices, for consumer price inflation? Governments in Europe and the U.S. have taken on huge amounts of new debt. Central banks are pumping money into the financial system. Are ordinary Germans not afraid of consumer prices getting out of control soon? Timmy, I can tell you between the two of us, Germans are always concerned about rising consumer prices, but they haven't been rising uh, very much in recent times. Uh, so, of course, um, there is the concern, but at the moment, I think uh, Germans have more reason to be concerned about consumer prices not rising strong enough or maybe even deflation. And, of course, you guys in Nigeria know perfectly why that is, because of the cheap oil, which makes energy prices for German consumers so super cheap, good for us, bad for oil producers. And, of course, what's playing in there is the question how quickly businesses will be allowed to go back into businesses again big business again how um, you know how many businesses might uh, go under during and because of this corona crisis if there's not so many businesses going under if there's strong competition after the corona crisis chances are that consumer prices will be rising again economists are saying that it's too early to say we have to wait and see how uh, the return to normal goes how smoothly it goes and then we can really uh, you know ask analysts about more precise predictions again Absolutely. We just have to wait and see, but I'm sure a lot of businesses can't wait to go back to normal. All right. I guess it's time to say thank God it's Friday. Enjoy the rest of the weekend. All right. <laughs> Okay, let's cross over now to London for some of the developments there. And I'm being joined by my colleague, Juliana Olanka. Hello, Juliana. Good afternoon. Well, people struggling with payday loans, car finance, and pawn shop borrowing will be granted a payment holiday on the plans by the Financial Conduct Authority. What is the plan around this? Well, uh, good afternoon, Chimase. For those um, who are struggling with their finances due to the fallout from COVID-19, this will come as a really welcoming news. Last week, uh, the FCA, the Financial Conduct Authority, the economic regulator in the UK, they did announce uh, that credit card companies and uh, those who have received loan payments will be receiving an interest-free break, as well as anybody um, who has access to an overdraft of up to £500. You'll also be able to receive that interest-free. But in this country, some of the people who are much worse off and who have higher financial difficulties are the people who go to apply for payday loans. The interest rates are particularly high, which is why the FCA have found it important to ask these companies to offer exactly the same thing that the credit companies are offering uh, consumers. This will include a three-day holiday, three-month holiday, uh, not asking them to pay um, interest rates. And it's not just the payday loan companies, anybody who also has a car loan, uh, but this will be scrutinised. And of course, you would have to prove that you are struggling um, with your finances. Now, what's quite important and what is, which is the small part of the script is that this is not a legal requirement. None of these companies have to do so, but the FCA is asking them to do so. And in the open letter, they said they expect companies to comply uh, with these measures. And if you don't do that, then of course there can be some serious circumstances. But all in all, good news because so many people, as you know, Jimmy, are suffering from the fallout uh, in the coronavirus. Absolutely. All right. Now, China's economy shrank for the first time in decades. How does it matter for the UK? Well, it matters um, immensely, and it has been quite a topic of discussion for economists here in the UK. Of course, China is the world's second largest economy. It is the global capital for exporting. And I think most importantly, it was the epicentre for the coronavirus epidemic. Those 6.5% uh, fall in GDP between January and uh, March will be closely looked at for all countries across the world, but I think particularly for those in the G7. 
11 because it kind of gives you um, an insight to what is to come. One of the most important parts of that data is just how uh, now they've restricted, well, they've removed the restrictions for the lockdown, how consumer confidence is starting uh, to rise up because that's one of the major talking points we have here in the UK, particularly as we still face another three weeks of a lockdown. Are people, uh, once these uh, measures are lifted, are they going to be going out to the shops? Are they going to be going out to restaurants? This is really important to Britain because unlike many other societies, it is a service-based economy. 80% of uh, Britain's GDP does rely on services, does rely on people going out, whining, dining, having a drink um, after work. So I think uh, lots of people in Britain, the economists, the analysis, they have been really focusing on the consumer confidence and hoping uh, that they will be able to take notes from China and how they can boost customer spending again, particularly in retail, because retail has suffered uh, severely over the past couple of years, uh, notwithstanding since the lockdown um, happened four weeks ago now. Mm. Well, it's the last training day for the week. Brings up to speed with the intraday numbers, their drivers, and of course, um, outlook for next week. Well, uh, in early trading, the FTSE actually started off pretty well. There seems to be a lot of optimism. I heard you speaking to Conrad in Frankfurt, and that's really because there seems to be um, some hope that perhaps humanity is, uh, you know, winning over the fight of this global pandemic. Of course, last night we did hear um, from US President Donald Trump that he may start lifting restrictions, that on the 1st of May he would like businesses to start booming again. That really uh, boosted some confidence confidence in traders, especially here in Britain. At intraday, the FTSE All Share is up by 3.34%. The FTSE 100 is also up by a similar amount. And the FTSE 250, the domestic market, that's up by 3.41%. In currencies, the pound also up on the dollar slightly, up on the euro by 0.11% and down on the Japanese yen by 0.04%. It's been a short week here in Britain and across the world, Chimmy. Next Next week is a full week and we will start seeing just before the end of the month those flash PMI data um, in construction, manufacturing and services. This of course shows what the health of an economy is like and this is going to be particularly important to Britain because we've had some really grim figures coming out of the IMF from the government's own financial watchdog just showing um, how, uh, how much of a, a downfall there could be in Q2 here in Britain. So lots of um, ana analysis will be uh, having a close eye on those numbers next week, Jimmy. We'll definitely look out for those um, data. In the meantime, enjoy the rest of the weekend. Thank you, Jimmy. And stocks in Asia rose on Friday as investors shrugged off data that showed China's economy shrinking by 6.8% in the first quarter in Japan. The Nikkei 225 led gains among the region's major markets as, uh, as it jumped 3.15%. The Topics Index also ended its trading day 1.43%. South Korea's KOSPI also saw robust gains as it surged to 3.03%. Hong Kong's Hang Seng Index rose 1.67%. Mainland Chinese stocks edged higher by the close, with the Shanghai Composite up 0.66%, while the Shenzhen Composite added 0.33%. Meanwhile, shares in Australia advanced with S&P ASS 200 gaining 1.31%. Overall, the MSCI Asia X Japan index rose 2.11%. And in the U.S. stock futures surged after a report said a Gilead science drug was showing effectiveness in treating the coronavirus. The move pointed to a jump for the stock market on Friday. Now, Dow Jones Industrial Average futures were up 705 points, implying a Friday opening gain of about 692 points. S&P 500 futures and Nasdaq 100 futures also pointed to gains for the two indices on the Friday open. Stocks tumbled from record highs in February into a bear market a month later as the spread of the coronavirus rolled market sentiment and the economic outlook. Since late March, the S&P 500 has jumped more than 25%, while the Dow has gained 266 in that time. Stocks also got a boost after the Federal Reserve cut rates to zero and stabilized credit markets, while Congress passed a stimulus plan. And after the break, we'll take a peep into South Africa for developments there. Just stay with us.